What's up guys and gals, it's Jacob with J&J Engraves. Uh, I'm going to be going over uh, 3D grayscale images. So, kind of like those fancy files you see on Etsy. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to do a simple version of that. Nothing too intense. I'll save that for a later video on like how to combine it in Photoshop and to make some cool signs and things like that. But this is just going to be taking a 3D model that you find you you know online or you make it yourself what have you if you you can use whatever to practice on as long as you're not selling it and showing anybody you know what happens between you and your laser stays between you and your laser uh, but either way you know just uh, pick an image that uh, that is a 3d model um, with some good gray tones and uh, you can choose the same image I'm uh, picking in this example or um, you can, you can pick your own, so it doesn't matter. But either way, uh, the process should remain the same. Uh, you'll need Photoshop and Lightburn to do it as I'm doing it. If you don't have those programs, I'm not exactly sure um, what you would do. I know GIMP has some, um, you know, uh, light light and shadow enhancement features and stuff like that, real similar to Photoshop, so you can probably get around that. but you really need to get an ordered dither pattern for this to work and uh, Lightburn has one of those preset I haven't found another uh, dither mode that's even similar in another program and I've looked just to see if I can get like a better result but the only one that I've found that really works well is Lightburn you can do half tone um, as well and uh, run it at like a 45 degree angle and that'll give it that crisscross like the order does uh, like a checker pattern uh, dither but um you've got to be careful because uh, you've got to really mess around and get the right dots and everything or you'll lose so much detail that it won't look right so I found the ordered preset on Lightburn just it works like 90% of the time very 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 rarely does that not work out for me so I'm going to show you guys how to do it and uh, if you have any questions or anything leave them below and if you like the video and learned something today be sure you uh, subscribe and leave a comment letting us know that you uh, enjoyed the video thank you again all right so here's the photo I'm working with in Photoshop it's just a picture I found a Wolverine riding on a motorcycle so you know work with ever which with with whatever image you want to um, but use this these processes to try to get your image to look as as good as you can so just follow these steps and everything should go good so first off, you're wanting to go up to Enhance at the top of the page, and then you want to scroll down to where it says Convert to Black and White. You want to click on that, and you'll have a preset menu that will come up with a few presets to choose from. So Photoshop has a few presets. I usually go with, go with Newspaper, but sometimes I go with the others. Just pick which one you think looks best for your image. So after you've converted the image into a black and white image, you want to go back under the Enhance tab, go down to Adjust Lighting, and click on Shadows and Highlights. This will bring up a little menu with some uh, sliders that will let you adjust your contrast and a bunch of other settings I'll show you. When you click on Shadows and Highlights, this is the menu that pops up. You can, uh, you can slide the sliders towards the right and it will lighten shadows, darken your highlights, and uh, it'll adjust your midtones. Uh, typically, this is about where I normally set it up at, but you can play around with it and see if uh, you get any better results. I'm really wanting to see a nice uh, mixture of grays, uh, highlights, darks, and all that good stuff, and uh, you'll get even more of that once you go into the next step get more of detail. So after you've adjusted your shadows and highlights, next you want to go back up to the Enhance tab, adjust lighting again, and then click on Levels. You can also just press Control L, that's the shortcut, but you want to go into your Levels menu next. So after you click on Levels, um, you'll notice that a graph will pop up like this. What this graph is representing is where your colors sit on the spectrum. So most of your colors are sitting right in the middle. Uh, in that gray area which is nice what you want to do next is take that white triangle on the graph on the bottom right where my mouse sits you want to grab that and pull that to the left a little bit not all the way over but just like uh, right where those uh, numbers start to spike up a little bit and you'll notice your image white night next you'll want to do the same thing for the black triangle on the left side except you want to drag it to the right right when the color bar starts to come up you may go a little bit past that or a little before it but either way that's about the spot you want to keep it at then i'll show you the middle 
So now if we take that middle triangle, the gray one, and we slide it to the right a little bit, you'll notice that image got really dark. And then once I slide it to the left a little bit, you'll notice it gets a lot lighter. So that's what that gray does, so you can adjust that to make it look a little better. Ultimately for me though, I'm going to settle on something right around in the middle. That's what I think will look the best, so whatever you feel like is best for you, but this is where I ended up setting mine up at. After I adjust my levels, I want to go in and do a little bit of background removal, so I'm going to click my magic wand tool up here. It's right beside the lassos. Um, you may have to go into a couple settings to get it, but you want the magic wand tool is what you want to select. After you've got the magic wand tool selected, you want to um, make sure your threshold isn't set or your tolerance isn't set too high. Too high of a tolerance will select too much, too little won't select enough. So too little is better than too much though. After you've clicked on the areas and cleaned that up and got that outline as tight to the uh, image as you can, you want to then remove that image and take the background off. So it should look something like this after you're done. You want the edges to be as close to the image as you can without really cutting anything away. And uh, you want it to be not too jagged. So just play around until you get something that looks nice and uh, presentable. So once you got your levels set and your background removed and you're happy with everything, you want to go up to the image tab at the top of Photoshop and you want to click on that. Find resize and then image size. You want to click on that and it'll bring you up to this menu. So in the uh, image size menu, you can resize the image, make it bigger, smaller in the, in, at the top portion where it says pixel dimensions. But what we are focusing on right now is resolution. For grayscale images, I've found that the best uh, resolution tends to be 250 to 275. So you want to set it either in, in that area there, and uh, then you would use that as your DPI and light burn. So now that we've got the background removed, colors leveled all that good stuff uh, we're running we're going to save this image and you're going to save it as a PNG that way the background stays transparent so now that you've saved the image you're going to go back into enhance you're going to go back into the levels and click that to go back into that sub menu if you look at where my mouse is you will see a white triangle you want to click that triangle and slide it all the way to the left it will make the image a black silhouette this will come in handy later on in Lightburn to make an outline and to mask and other things. I'll show you in uh, the next part of the video. After you've got that done, then you want to take that and you want to save this as a separate file as like outline or something like that. Alright, so I did that as best as I could. Um, hopefully you guys can follow that. Let me know if I did that okay. Um, but that is the first start the first part of the video that you would do in Photoshop. This is just editing everything to get it to the right, you know, look to do to get these images to look right. You may have to practice and, and, and it may burn through a little bit of material, but like everything, practice makes perfect. If you follow these steps though and you and you keep practicing, you'll notice some improvements and things like that once you start noticing uh, that, that it's too dark in areas or it's too light in areas. So you'll you'll learn. But uh just try to follow as closely as you can to what I'm doing, and you you should get close hopefully. And uh, you know, let me know how it, how it looks uh, and everything. I'd love to um, I'd love to know that you guys are, are having good luck with it. So um, this next part is going to be with light burn. So if you're using laser durable or RD works or something like that, I really don't know uh, if you guys have anything similar. But uh, we're going to try to. Uh, we're going to be doing this in Lightburn, so follow along if you have those programs, and if you know the alternative in those or, or, or comparative way to do it, um, feel free to, to tell people below if they're using that program and uh, share in the comments. Thanks, guys. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully this turns out good. So, thanks. So now that you've got Lightburn open, uh, you should import both the outline and the original image that we did. Get both of those on the cam canvas. It should look something like this. Uh, you want to leave them separately. Normally, I change the colors on them and uh, then you'll do the next step. Hold down your control button and be sure you select the other um, image so you've got both selected. You want to make sure that there's a box around both like I have in the picture here and then you want to follow the next step. Up at the top of the page you should see a bullseye symbol like the one on the screen. Once you click that, you'll notice that the black one or whichever one you selected first will go directly over top of the other one. Now you want to click in the blank space and make sure you don't have anything else selected. You want nothing selected now. And then you want to click on the silhouette image. 
and after you click on the silhouette image you want to right click on that it will bring down a menu like this I want you to find trace image at the bottom and click on that after you click on trace image it should bring you to a menu that looks like this so now we have our silhouette image in the trace menu uh, you want to make sure that you have delete image after trace uh, selected like it is in my picture where my cursor is you if you're not happy with the outline you can ad adjust cut off and threshold a little bit in some of the other settings to get it more precise but I'm happy with this so I'm gonna press OK so now if you've done this correctly um, if you have a filled in um, shape there you want to change it over into your layer settings to align and it should look just like this and this is what you're trying to achieve so if you've gotten this far and it looks like this you've done you've done good alright so now that you get your outline on the screen you want to make a, a square going from the left to right and select everything that you've got in that area um, so when you're done it should look like this alright guys so this is when it starts getting a little confusing so uh, for this step what we're trying to do here is remove all that space you see that square that that negative space around the image we're going to tighten all that up and we're going to use that outline to do it so now that we've got everything selected, you want to hold down control and select the image. The selection box around it should tighten up and the square should just be around the outline box. That's good. Now what you want to do is you want to press control C, that's going to copy that outline and alt V which is going to paste it in place. Now that you've pasted another outline in place, you want to hold down your control button and click your image again so you'll see that big square go around where the image is and now you'll have that copy that you've made selected so it should just be the image and that copied line selected that's what you're you're trying to do here and then the next step you'll see why I'm trying to do all this it's, it's super cool so now you want to go and you want to right click where you've got everything selected and the pop-up menu will come up you want to find apply mask to image and click that you'll notice um, after you do that the square doesn't tighten up everything looks the same but this is essentially what you can do it's essentially confining that image to that outline so if you move it anywhere outside the out outline it's just going to remove that bit so it just keeps it confined to the outline and it's really nice for if you're trying to cut or if you're trying to make a sign and you don't want all that excess space to deal with so this is a super cool step but the next part's important too so make sure you got everything centered uh, back with your outline and all that your image is centered with that and everything um, and then you want to right click it and then go down to flatten image mask and after you do that you will notice that the square tightens up around the image so now that everything's said and done, um, you should have a very tightened up image and it should be easy to design with now. Not only that, but you did the control and uh, the copy paste thing to keep the outline around it. If you would have just done the flattened image and the, if you would applied the image in the mask, it would have deleted your outline. So now that we've masked the image, we're going to select the image only and then we're going to right click the image then we're going to find adjust image and click on that to get into the image adjustment menu this is the image adjustment menu in lightburn what we want to do here is make sure that our image mode is in the ordered dither mode uh, that's the one we want to do for grayscaling uh, then we will adjust dpi with your DPI, you want to make sure that you set it to the same resolution that we set the uh, image up as in Photoshop. So we set it up as 275 pixels per inch in Photoshop. We want to make it 275 dots per inch in Lightburn. With your DPI set, normally I'll go over to Enhance Radius, Enhance Amount, and I'll change that to about 25 or 50. You can play with that if you want to. If you feel like your uh, adjustments in Photoshop are great, then leave them as is and see how it turns out. With all your settings done and everything now, you can go and uh, exit your image settings uh, menu, press OK. Then you want to click on your image and you want to right click it again and go to where it says save processed bitmap. You want to click on that. I usually save mine as the image I'm working with ordered at the end, something along those lines. Then you want to click save. Then you want to import back into your workspace the dot bitmap image that you just saved through a light burn. That's the one we're going to be uh, grayscaling. 
After I'm um, done importing that, I usually change that dither um, image to my grayscale layer color, which is normally 08 gray, but it's whatever you use. And then I also do that and leave my original image a different color because I'm going to eventually, um, you know, not output that and I'm not going to show that image. So first I'm going to select my dither pattern, then I'm going to select the original image that's in the outline portion there. And then I'm going to hit that bullseye symbol right up at the top there again. Then I'm going to take that original image layer and I'm going to uh, remove its output and not let it be shown. Should look like something like this. You should not have the other um, image layer um, available to be output. That will make it look terrible if that happens. Plus it will seem like a really long engraving time uh, make sure you double check everything if something seems off all right guys so here's my settings just a reminder i'm using a 100 watt co2 with a two and a half inch lens focus that's the uh, laser i use uh, if you're using a glowforge or a, uh, a diode laser or something like that it, it'll be a lot different than these settings here so uh, just work with uh, what you know is best for your machine or try to look up someone uh, someone settings who does grayscale uh, with a similar machine as yours but um, pay attention to some of the stuff here I'm running at a at a 270 60 pi it normally rounds it up um, but that's the 275 we've been using this whole time 200 speed 50 power and we're in grayscale mode Alright, so this is it. Not sanded. Looks pretty ugly. It might not be that great, but I'll show you some other work that I've done uh, in case this one doesn't convince you, but we'll see. Let's get it sanded up and see how it turns out. Alright, so there it is after it's been clear coated, sanded down, all that good stuff. And this would look a lot better if it was bigger. This is a, a really tiny example so you don't really give these details a chance to uh, shine like they they would if this was on a bigger uh, bigger piece but you know it's not the most fun thing in the world to, to waste a giant piece of wood and find out that uh, what your that your experiment didn't work so I always try to go a little small and, and see how it looks if I think that it would turn out better bigger then I'll, I'll do it in a larger size now if you do scale this up you want to make sure that you rescale it before the ordered pattern and basically you want to take the original image in Lightburn size that up and then redo the order pattern again in the new size if you size up the order pattern the order dither pattern picture you know I'm getting tongue-tied here but if you if you size up that dither pattern picture it's not gonna look right so this is a uh, pretty much the achieved effect though I'll give, show you guys a couple other examples of things I've done and uh, in the next video we'll, we'll get a little bit more fancy with it and I'll show you how to like incorporate this with a sign or or something like that so uh, I'll show you a few more examples and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the video and learn something cool alright so here's another Wolverine that I did um, using that same method and you can see this one's a little bit better because it had way more more of the guy to work with that one with the motorcycle did get a lot of the details and like the wheel and stuff but I still would have liked that to come out a little better but it needs to be bigger but that's so here's where I played with a, a dinosaur. I did one on tile, and then I followed it up with wood. The uh, one on tile is with a Jarvis dither pattern. The one on the um, the wood is with the uh, grayscale pattern or method I just showed you guys. Here is the Wolverine that I showed you in next to a tiled version. The tiled is a Jarvis dither, and then the Wolverine would be uh, on wood as well. Well, I think that's it, everybody. Uh, if you enjoyed it, leave a like. Let me know if uh, there's anything else you'd like to know. Thanks again. Peace.